jump flood. Um, jump flood is a method for doing what's called a distance field. A distance field uh, in 2D is often used, for example, to create not so aliased but fairly low res alpha masks to get the outlines. It's um, worth looking up if you are not sure what it's about. We can uh, try doing all the steps here and you can see the result of it and you can see how it gets more and more white the further away from the outline of the flower we get. And so that denotes how far are we away from the nearest point on the flower. You can also see that it has a fairly cool faceted look that you can also use for a lot of cool things. Like maybe you want um, you want to create some stylized rocks that exactly fit a shape or something. You can do it with this. So let's try just doing the first step. So the difference between the first step here and the first step over in the flood fill is that we're not just seeding a single pixel. We are seeding all the pixels that fall within the outline of what profile it is that we want to find the distance to. What we're seeding it with is a um, high value in the blue channel to indicate that this is inside our outline. This is inside the profile where we're finding the distance to. And then we're it's storing its own UV coordinate in the red and the green channel. So it's basically all it's doing It's just that it is testing if the value is high enough and if it is, it just takes the UV coordinate and puts that through. Otherwise it gives it black. So it just fills in everything with uh, the UV coordinate and a one in the blue channel if inside the outline or zero, zero, zero if outside the outline. The idea here is that we can then test the blue pixels repeatedly and every time we do a kernel in much the same way as with the flood fill, but instead of just looking for if there is a value, we look at the UV coordinate of the found value and see if it's a UV coordinate that is closer to our currently processed pixels own UV coordinate than what it might have beforehand or what another of its neighbors might have. The problem with that is that in much in the same fashion as with the flood fill, we would have to run quite a few iterations. And each iteration is a much more expensive because we're not just looking whether or not there is black or white in any of the eight neighbors. We're looking at whether we have to measure distance and do other arithmetics that just increase the cost of it. So suffice to say, it's a slightly expensive operation. But there is a way to speed it up and that is what makes it a jump flood algorithm and this jump part is quite ingenious and let me just show that in Photoshop. So we're pretty used to by now that we have a, the currently processed pixel and then we have a neighborhood of 8 pixels and we have some kernel that we use to sample this neighborhood. But if we want to start looking for something that might be halfway across the image, there is a better way of finding this that jump flood fill takes advantage of. And that is you can just choose to explode your kernel out. So they all go halfway across the image, half image, half, half, half image. Um, and then what you do is that slowly as um, you do your iterations is that every iteration you halfen the distance so you bring it closer back again so then it goes to then it goes to maybe like uh, a quarter one eighth one sixteenth and it keeps going until it's literally just one pixel and you are back to this immediate neighborhood and so what happens is that if you have an image that is a uh, square ish and uh, there's a pixel over here getting processed and it's it's maybe this it's a bit of a weird thing that we're looking at this this is the profile and it's looking like halfway across and it's finding a pixel in there and and so in here we are now storing the uv position of down here and that's great because next iteration there might have been a pixel over here for example that looked down here but didn't find anything because it was just exactly short of finding this but then then now it, what it finds is actually it finds this pixel and we can zoom in when finding this pixel here it will go like hey do you have 
a stored UV coordinate of a point in the profile that I can also have? And the point goes like, yeah, sure, man, you can have this one. And then now this guy has this position down here. Now, as it goes forward, there's going to be other pixels around here that it will also learn about. And it'll it'll start finding not, not this position down here, but it will find one that then is maybe this here. And then it'll get that UV coordinate stored in its red and green channel instead, and so on and so forth. And at the end of these iterations, where it has first sampled halfway across, then a quarter across, an eighth across, and so on and so forth, so forth, it's only just asking its immediate neighbors for the last little fine tuning. Hey, are there any of you that have a value that's just have a coordinate for somewhere on the profile that is just a little bit closer than the one I have myself? And so it will get exactly the pixel that is within the profile that is the closest to it, despite the fact that it hasn't gone and ser searched exhaustively, but have just kind of lazily jumped halfway across the image and then quarter and an eighth and so on. And that is the whole idea of the jump flood algorithm. So now let's try doing a few steps like uh, we do a single step here on top and you can see it looks like we are seeing the, um, the same mid image superimposed. But what's really happening is just that we are having all those black pixels out here have been jumping halfway across the image to over here and have found a, a match, right? It's not the closest one. I mean, obviously this one is closer to this in here, but on that first step, it's getting the one that's all the way over here. And now it has that coordinate available to all its neighbors to also find. And one of them might then find that that is actually coordinate that is closer to where it is. So we then do it at a smaller scale, smaller, 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 yada, data oh now we start to see the outline oh and now it's starting boom we do the last step so the last step that happens is the one where we actually get the distance so at the point where every single pixel has then been asking all its immediate neighbors about the uv coordinate that they have that might be the one that's closest to itself and it now has the position of the absolute closest pixel in the profile to itself, then it just measures this distance one last time and stores the distance. So here inside the blueprint, I've opened the do next step function and the do next step function is just sort of a slightly convoluted way where you can, it can just do one step at a time and it starts out first doing the first step and then it runs the different iterations and then it does the finishing step. It, it's a little convoluted and it's just written this way so I can constantly ask for the next step even though it's an iteration that sets another value every time and there's a start, a start pass and an end pass. And it's all like this just so that it's possible to both have it run in a tick, but also possible to do it by clicking the um, clicking the do step button. So the interesting thing in here is n it's not really any of this though. It is uh, calculate number of steps. And what this does is that it takes the log two of the texture size. And the value that comes back from this is basically the number of steps we have to do because this is the number of times you can halven the texture size until you're down to one. So let's just have a look at the step material. And the step material has all of this fancy stuff down here. And you can see it's basically the log two again. And then we have a step count. And we add one to this because we don't want to start with the full rest. We want to start with the half rest and go down from there. And what we do with this is that we basically calculate how far we have to step every time. Um, how many pixels do we have to explode our kernel out with? Are we going halfway, a quarter across, an eighth across, or how far across the image are we going? All of this is piped into a custom node, so even more HLSL, because now we have to do a conditional convolution. And let's have a look in Visual Studio Code. So we're doing things a bit different here. I've declared the variables for um, storing the temporary values inside the loop outside here. Um, don't, I doubt it makes a big difference. Then we have the final position and the final distance. So these are the best matches found at that point while doing the iterations. 
and of course the the worst result we can have is what we already have because we're hoping to find something better right so we um sample ourselves so we get the uv coordinates stored in ourselves not our own uv coordinate but the one that we're holding on to and then we're measuring the distance between that stored uv coordinate and our actual uv coordinate so here we have our our actual uv coordinate and the stored uv coordinate so these are what we're hoping to improve on so these are the values that we start out with we then go into our iterations we find our offset using the step size we then um, sample the pixel that is at this offset we store that in the curve post that we actually had up here so you can see we keep overriding that we calculate the distance and store that in the current distance and then we say that if that uh, position that we found um, also comes with a blue value of one and it's either closer to the best distance that we have found till now which is either the one we had already stored or one we have found in a previous uh, iteration in here or we just simply haven't had a match yet well then we take this one as the new best the new final post becomes the, the curl post and the new final distance becomes the current distance current dist so we run this for the uh, eight neighbors that we uh, that we have with the offset that we're currently using and then we return this final position which is either the one we started with or hopefully something better that we found on the way so a uv coordinate that's closer to ourselves and that is how then when we do this first step here you will notice that we start we don't ever overwrite the value in here we uh, we just start out with some best guess and then as we do the step it gets overridden so now it's a jumble of lines because we keep finding better and better matches for every single pixel as we go along and so we do all the steps and we get the result and yeah that's jump flood for you <laughs>